Oh, well, hello. Welcome to my uh, welcome to my tiny cabin. I actually just constructed this place. Why don't you come in and take a look? It's the quickest. It looked like the easiest, and it's the uh, it was the cheapest uh, tiny house that I could find. Just taking a break on my tiny house floor. I'm gonna shut. I constructed it this morning. I wanted something to sort of kickstart a new world of projects and adventures for me. You know, right here is all of the materials. Right here is all the building materials. This is everything that's going to make up my uh, my tiny cabin that I'm building. Uh, right over here is my uh, is my work site. That's the only place I got power. See, I've got a cord over here. I've got a cord running all the way up into the window <laughs> because the outside receptacles aren't working. But this guy is called a miter saw, and it's going to help me do angled cuts, things like that. <clears throat> I've already done a little bit of cuts just to kind of practice. You know, make sure I, <laughs> I didn't want to start this video by cutting my thumb or, or something off. So I did a little bit of practicing yesterday. Uh, the only thing I did without you guys is I made sure that this thing was level. And the reason that I did it without you guys is because it was just a lot of tedious kind of digging. You see how I've got, you know, some of the actual, some of the actual posts and stuff dug into the ground. All of that is so that this thing will actually sit level. This right here in construction terms is called a level. Ralphie, what you doing over there in the woods? Come here, Ralph. Come here. Ralph's, of course, with me on the construction site. Anyways. Basically, when I set this thing on these uh, on this wood, I want I to make sure it's straight. Ralphie, you haven't said hi yet. Come here. Come here. Ralph's here on the site. Ralph's here doing the construction with me, of course. It wouldn't be, in a, it wouldn't be an adventure without Ralphie. Basically, what I've got going on now is I've got this stack of, of wood right here that I need to kind of fill in as, as beams all across this. A little Sharpie line uh, all down every two feet. I think right now I'm just going to put the camera down here and maybe show me, maybe show me screwing a couple of these beams or something in. I don't know. Let's see. Let's see how it works. It's a, it's, it's a brand new experience all the way around. This is the cheapest and, and quickest and easiest little tiny house I can find. I actually purchased a blueprint for this. So I have um, in my phone all of the measurements and everything. So, you know, someone's gone out and done all the hard work for me and, and, you know, told me what materials to buy and told me what length to cut everything and what angles to cut everything. So this being my first tiny house, I'm sort of just, you know, following the instructions. But otherwise, you're here with me. Um, if you want to check out the blueprints that I'm actually using for this tiny house, uh, I'll leave that somewhere down in the description, in the comments. Um, you know, I'm not sure how this is all going to work, but I'll leave, I'll, I'll give you some sort of a link so that you can actually get the blueprints to this place, order the materials for yourself, and uh, and build this build this tiny house for yourself if you like. But it's the quickest. It looked like the easiest. And it's the, uh, it was the cheapest uh, tiny house that I could find. Why did I choose all those things? Um, so, you know, simply just because it's my first one. I wanted to have an adventure. I wanted to, I wanted to build my first tiny home. And um, that's what I'm doing. Let's get to it. Let's get this foundation set up. All right, so there was my first beam all screwed in. Pretty good work I've done there so far, huh? It's called foundation building. Did I mention I'm actually doing this thing all by myself too? That's the challenge that I wanted to give myself for this. Not only did I want to build uh, the cheapest little tiny house I could find, but I wanted to I wanted to see if I could do it quickly and I wanted to see if I could do it all by myself. So think of this more as a I can do it and so can you <laughs> type of inspiration thing. And if you use the specific if you if you use the blueprints for the specific tiny house, um, this is going to help you drastically, of course, in the actual construction yourself. I'm going to finish screwing all these beams, and the next time I pick you up, this uh, this foundation back here is going to start looking a little bit more foundation-like. When you're building things like this, you know, it feels like the, the drill becomes an extension of your hand. Got all the beams in place. Just find that the most amazing, fascinating thing about humans is that we can take a pile of stuff like this. That's sitting right over there. Just a bunch of bunch of wood. Well, first of all, it was trees. And then, you know, it required all of these steps for people to turn it into like two by fours and, you know, actual building materials. But then someone like me with a noggin like this comes along and I'm about to turn this thing into a, uh, I'm about to turn all those building materials into a wee little enchanted tiny home in the woods. And I just can't wait to show you. Now a tool that every construction guy needs it's a nice handy blade to cut into your uh, into your build materials. It's 
very satisfying when you cut through those uh, straps because they're held tight and they kind of go back. Okay. I've got all of our flooring wood moved over. Our build materials is, is uh, finally starting to dwindle back here. And now what we gotta figure out how to do is basically how to lay this all on the, uh, on the old foundation back here. So I'm gonna do what I just showed you about maybe three or 400 more times. And I'll bring you back out when we get to the point where I have to start, you know, cutting that, that last trim piece. That's gonna be the hardest part of all of this. Getting these big pieces screwed on is the easy part. And now our saw is good to go. So enough, enough wasting time. Let's make this cut. Let's cut this. Uh, let's cut this piece of wood that I'm so, that I'm so anxious to cut for some weird reason. Hold on. Let me find a good angle for you. This is definitely not the right tool for the job, but we're gonna we're gonna have to make it work. Well, that was that was a bit of a shit show, but I made it. I did end up cutting through it. Definitely not the right tool for the job. I needed a circular saw. See the size of this piece. We're about that much closer to uh, to having a floor in our tiny house here. Take a little stroll. Our first little stroll in the tiny house. Look at this. Look at this little. Uh, see that on the ground. It's a little sunspot. Ralph. Ralph. Come check out the floor, bro. What you think? You like our tiny house floor, Ralph? Just taking a break on my tiny house floor. I'm gonna try, I constructed it this morning. I don't even think I've mentioned it, but this is gonna be an A-frame style cabin. So we've got to do, we've got to build the front and the back walls. And then the sides are going to be kind of a different a different piece, but we'll get to that in a second. I'm measuring out, I'm marking out all of the pieces that I'm going to need for both that front and back wall. I'm going to chop all of that wood so I, I have it ready ready to assemble. And then we'll kind of do a dry assembly on the ground and I'll show you how it all looks. Dunzo. Some good old B-roll line drawing. Uh, I'm writing the list and checking it twice before I actually make all of my cuts into this wood. You know, worst case scenario, I screw it up and I, I have to go buy some more 2 by 4s It's not that big of a deal. But, you know, I'm trying to get it right. Playing around with this digital protractor thing, uh, drawing lines on the boards, looking at things, backing up, you know, kind of seeing if it's all going to work before I cut it. Now it's just starting to fit in better. See that? Eventually I'm going to be able to point over there at a tiny house and say I built that thing myself. Not that I, that I did it perfectly. And then from there, who knows? Who, uh, you know, it'll be an art piece. That's the way that I see it. Maybe I'll cut some windows in. I'll do some awesome things with lighting, with the electrical. It's gonna be a blank canvas, and that's what I'm super excited about. So I've made a pretty grave mistake, but you know, the only thing that's lost is a little bit of two by fours. Let me show you what I did. See that wall? That's all coming together. Yeah, got it all done, all those nice hand cuts except it's laying flat and this is actually supposed to be like this but at least i noticed before i was completely done everything like i said i just wasted some i just wasted a bit of lumber so you can see right here where i've marked the angles that i need to cut see right there now all that's left to do is actually make these hand cuts so let's uh let's get to it i guess i'll show you this first one I don't think I can do this for every, uh, every angle. I'm giving up on that. I'm doing that over and over and over again. I'll be back with you when I figure out a solution. Alright, so I'm in the hardware store. This is the saw that I decided on. I don't know if it's going to do the trick. It's another thing you can say when you're constructing your own tiny home is you're back on site. Got my saw. Let's see how uh, let's see how difficult it is to hand cut these 
these things. It ain't too bad, but it's still, it's gonna be a lot of work cutting all of these. I think I have 14 of these to do. Actual sawing's not, in and of itself, not too hard. Just a repetitive motion over and over again. Ooh, making that mistake on the, on building the wall was a blow. But I fixed it all, we're back in spot. I just made the first cut, I made that first angle, so I know it's possible. It's just gonna take a lot of work. But you know what, if I can do this, anybody can do it. If you fight the saw, it becomes a lot harder. But if you just kinda go with the motions and let your arm move, You almost don't even notice the progress it's making, but before you know it, you're, uh, you're all the way done. Fortunately for some of these cuts, I can still use the saw, so I don't have to do necessarily all of them by hand, but there's still those 14. All right, last shot of the day, because it just started raining. I almost got the, one, the back wall done. This is the back wall, I almost got it done. Make good progress on the front wall too. Hold that handsaw on, man. It was tough. Anyways, it's thunder and stuff. I'm gonna get all this, all these tools packed up, and um, yeah, I'll see you. I'll see you back on day two. My brothers, my brothers in construction. I had a hard day on the site myself, building my tiny home. I'm just getting on the site here. I'm just getting started. And um, yeah, let's get to work. Let's dive right in. Shoot. You know what? I'm already making the same, same mistake I did yesterday and I'm doing it on the flip side. So hold on, cut this. We're gonna cut this part. Gonna get our angles just like that. This thing is what's making it possible for me to make all of these. It's making it possible for me to make all of these cuts like that. You see how that just kind of fits into the wall there? Well, it will anyways. <laughs> anyways, it's all thanks to this, uh, this digital protractor. And, uh, you know, my brute force. And we officially have that back wall ready to screw together. But we're not going to screw it together yet because I've still got to make all of the internal pieces for the front wall over there. Once I get this screwed together, I'm going to go and grab the back wall and get that all screwed together. Holy moly, it's the first time I ran out of screws. I actually got four of these little jugs. I'm not sure if I'll need them. I feel like I got a lot more screws than I actually need. But anyways, monumental moment. First time I ran out. Hmm, I would say. Definite, definite hints of, of metallic. With aftertone, aftertones of oil and grease. Well, still working on the wall. One other thing that I want to point out is I'm specifically building them up on top of here so I don't have to lift them back up. See how I just lean this one down? It's literally time to raise the wall, the back wall to, to start with. So, I don't know, let's raise it. All right, I'm walking slowly so it doesn't tip. Now I just gotta seal it down to the ground. It's a little wobbly, but it's holding up. Now I'm just gonna go through and basically secure it as tight as I can, put screws all the way down. That's next over there. Would you look at this? We found a magical little turtle on the, on the construction site. How are you doing today, friend? I guess I'm probably invading on your territory a little bit, but we'll get to know each other. Hey, mosey on, you can hang out at the site with me. You don't need a hard hat. Let's see if this is a cool shot. All right, so the back wall's done. Now I've just got to put the front wall up. Wish me luck.
We've erected the front and the back walls of the tiny home. Did you, th did you think it would come? I thought this would actually happen yesterday, but um, yeah, no, today's the perfect day. Okay, so now to begin the process of making the, the uh, I'm calling it like the rib cage of the, of the tiny home. <laughs> I gotta admit, it's a lot easier than the handsaw. So I actually went ahead and installed one of the uh, one of the rib pieces just to make sure that it all works. Let's see it right here. And the next time you see me, I'm gonna have all of those ribs. Yeah, I think I'm confident in saying I'm gonna have all of those ribs um, tacked into the to the foundation over there. But for now back to cutting and I'm just really thankful that I'm not having a handsaw. I've got the ribs built into the uh, to the tiny house here. How many ribs is going to take seven screws? Did you understand what I said? This beam will just sort of hold things in place while I get a uh, well, I get everything kind of situated up top. I'm up on top of the tiny house. I've almost secured the beam into place. The way that I did this all by myself is number one. Can you see my feet? I'm crawling around on the uh, crawling around on the siding. So this uh, this two by four that I attached to the to the what did I call this thing? The rib cage here that allows me to kind of walk around up here. It definitely helps. And then the way I got these beams up here, cause I couldn't hold that whole beam all by myself. So I put these little blocks up here just to hold it into place. And then while it was held into place, I can go through and I can screw everything on. I mean, if that ain't skill, I don't know what is. Use my left hand when I'm a right handy, screwing in the ridge beam. And uh, don't forget my right hand over here, my primary is holding the, is holding you. Just zip that guy right out of there. This is when it's really gonna start looking finished. It's when we start tackling this stack of uh, this stack of what, what once was a, I don't know how many trees that would be. But I sure am grateful that they gave themselves up for my uh, tiny house. How much more of, of a house does that look like today than it did this morning, huh? This morning we had none of that. We had, we had none of the walls up. All we had was the foundation. Did a little bit of uh, work in preparation for tomorrow. I didn't want to start the day with something really difficult. So I took it upon myself to lift the uh, pieces up there. I'll see you too on uh, day three, little house in the woods. A little tiny house in the woods. I haven't got you from this angle yet. This may be your, this may be your proper angle, tiny house in the woods. Right before we left on day two, I had hoisted those um, pieces of drywall up onto the up onto the top there. They're actually just sitting on those two by fours, but I want to get that door that's sitting over there, and I want to fit it into this uh, into this hole just to make sure that everything's just to make sure that everything's going to work fine. Whew. Right now, all I can think about is how happy I am that that door fits. So it was really hard to be standing up on this beam and also kind of pushing, pushing that into place. So what I ended up doing is, you know, in general, kind of my scrap wood supports, I would shove these up in here, just like this. And I, I inched this thing upward little by little until it was close enough to the top where I could actually climb up here and, um, you know, hold it into place and screw it up on the top. Now to, to finish putting up the, the second hardest piece of plywood <laughs> and hopefully a decent vlog shot a vlog angle i always wanted to do one of those like super high speed like, zzz, zzz, like the project's kind of done thing all right we've officially got the uh we've officially got our top pieces of plywood on there. Now that I've got those top two uh, plywood pieces on, it can only mean one thing. But it's time to do the middle section now. I'm 
gonna get that first screw in. And you're not quite out of the dark. So what you do is you wiggle over, you wiggle over, still leaning, still leaning, and then you tack that second one in. Then it's just a matter of, you know, going through and screwing it in. But the hard part is balancing this thing by yourself while you're trying to uh, to screw it into these to these boards here. We're gonna screw boards um, just you know periodically up the side of the plywood there, and the reason for that is because we need the the metal material that we're gonna use as the roof. Um, we don't want to screw directly into that plywood. Complete. It's siding time. So we finally get to put this uh, this siding that I've been waiting to use just because, I don't know, it looks so pretty. I don't even know what I'm gonna do with it. Paint it, stain it. But for right now, we actually have to get this on the building. And did I mention I did a couple practice rounds and using this staple gun thing feels absolutely, uh, feels pretty incredible, let me put it that way. Right. Did you hear how satisfying it was when he went tsh, tsh. Don't worry, I'll show you some notes. Uh, I'll show you some close-ups when I'm using it down here. And we can really get the, uh, it's the most satisfying tool that I have. Just as I'm starting to get down to the side here, I mean, you hear it. <laughs> the rains are coming. I think day three is being, uh, is being shut down. So we'll have to start day four. Picking up where we left off, putting the siding on the front here. This is the second day it's ended in rain. I can't believe it. Let's get one view from afar, even though it's starting to rain. Goodbye. Goodbye, day three. I'll miss you. I'm sorry I couldn't stay longer. All right, there she is, pulling on in, day four. We get this day four started tiny house. It looks just like I left you. Alright, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm looking at my jaggedy line on the on the door there. There's sp there's a big space in one of the uh, in one of the beams up there. Can you see that? I mean, this is the reality. I'm just trying to I'm just trying to be real. This is my first tiny house build. It's not perfect. I admit that, but you know what? I'm kind of glad that those imperfections are in there. It pains me to say that because I, I, I hate the imperfections, don't get me wrong. But you know what? I'm going to cover all this stuff up with trim and make it look good. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get up there at some point. All of these walls are going to be finished on the inside here at some point. All of that's going to be nice and sealed up in there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to fix it all. She's in. Just got to be trimmed. Anyways, just wanted to show you that first shot. Now I'm going to put the camera down. Like I said, it's time for action. I'm sure I'm going to bring you out, you know, as I finish this piece, probably as I'm doing some of the back piece. But really the goal is to, um, you know, get done with this, get done with this side and stuff. As fun as the nail gun is. The nail gun is my favorite tool. I'm ready to, I'm ready to stop using it because I want to get on to the last step, which is going to be adding the, it's going to be adding the roofing. <laughs> Debating on doing something like this, see? That'll look nice. But first thing I want to see is uh, what it looks like when I get the metal on the side of the uh, on the side of the building. This is going to have a metal roof. This A-frame uh, tiny cabin. We're going to have a couple window areas right there. Don't get. I'm getting too far ahead of myself though. I'm, I'm daydreaming in the clouds because we still got one more step, and that is this back wall. Well, it's official. The back is done. We're going to be attaching this corrugated metal and uh, plastic pieces on the side of the tiny house here. Again, very thin, <laughs> kind of cheap materials if I'm being honest with you. But this is, uh, this is an ultra cheap tiny cabin. 
First time I've ever used one of these uh, squeezy gun things. Is that what you call these things? Is that what you call these squeezy guns? See what I mean about getting intimate with the uh, tiny house? Probably no one else will ever, you know, be able to lay across the uh, lay across the the ridge line of this of this tiny house in the past. But I'll know I'll know that I've been up there. I think it's because they have like a rubber, a little rubber thing on the end. But these, uh, you know, what it's like when you when you go into like a tire store, like a place that sells tires. And that's what. Uh, <laughs> That's what cracking the seal on that uh, on that screw thing sounds like. Right, one for the camera. Oops. One for the camera. Maybe a few for the camera. That's what the other side will look like when it's done. So I'll talk to you again. And I'm hanging that last piece right over there. Got the door thing still locked. <laughs> Does it feel monumental? Put these last screws in. It feels pretty monumental to me. This is what I've decided to do with the uh, with the trim here. I decided I did have enough lumber. Can you see that in there? Anyways, what this is for, you see that? We're on the last step, can you believe it? I gotta open this door carefully so it doesn't fall on me because for this last step, we're going inside. And the reason we're going inside is because it's time to install the door. But first, take a look around at our uh, Take a look around at our tiny cabin. So four good days of work. And then of course, none of this inside part is finished yet. So who knows how long that's gonna take. <laughs> oh, well, hello. Welcome to my uh, welcome to my tiny cabin. I actually just constructed this place. Why don't you come in and take a look? Sorry, it's still a little messy. So this is the interior. We went for a real unfinished look here on the inside. No, I'm just kidding. We've got, I've just got that left to do. Always a project. Always trying to keep busy, you know. Well, welcome to the cabin. There's not much room to go. I can't quite well, actually. I can touch from, from side to side with my fingertips here. So that was it. That was the final step. That was adding the door onto the tiny cabinet. Now is the most important part of any construction project. Uh, and that's the cleanup. And that, my friends, has something on my face. Maybe. And that, my friends, is called cleaning up a site. Remember the material pile that made up the tiny cabin? Well, this is what's left. Nothing but a little pile of rubble. I picked this tiny house because, number one, I thought it looked cool. Number two, it was cheap and it seemed easy enough for me to accomplish on my own. That was, that was the, the goal that I was really trying to tackle here was can I actually build you know, this tiny cabin all by myself? But what I really wanted to finish this thing for was the mystery of the future is the best way that I can put it. Now I've got sort of a base camp out here in, in the woods. I've got something that I, can, that I can think about. I've got something that I can do projects with. You know, what are we gonna do inside this thing? You know, let's, let's take a look in. What are we gonna do inside of here? You know, should I put a should I put a light right there? Maybe another light right there? 
how am I going to finish these walls? Should I use the same wood that I used on the outside and just sort of bring it in for the cabiny feel? I thought about hanging plants all up in here with sort of a greenhouse effect. Uh, who, who knows what, what I'm going to do with this place? And that's, that's the excitement of everything here. That's what I'm really going for is I wanted something to, I wanted something to sort of kickstart a new world of projects and adventures for me. Maybe we'll put some sort of a turtle pond right here. I've always wanted to do a turtle pond. And now that I've got a tiny cabin out in the woods, I can do that if I want to. Building something like this is just what it took for me to kind of take that step into, into a new world, into a new world of, of adventures and projects and hobbies. And life is just exciting. See how I set the ladder up? <laughs> I did that to add interest for my thumbnail. All right, there she is. Let me walk around, give one more, one more look of her, one more loop-de-loo. There it is. I don't really know how to end this thing, so I guess I'll just do it like this. We built a tiny cabin in four days. I appreciate you hanging out with me. I appreciate you, um, you know, watching me, watching me build it. I know this is after the fact that I'm talking to you now, or that you're hearing my words, but believe me, in spirit, you were here with me the whole time. Having this, having this little camera, this little stick to talk to <laughs> is, uh, is to, strangely enough what motivates me when I'm out here in the woods, you know, building something like a little tiny cabin. So you helped me get this done and I appreciate that. As I usually say, I'm not sure what my next adventure will be, but it's gonna be something amazing and I can't wait to see you there. Well, tiny cabin, it was a treat and the pleasure, the pleasure was all mine. I had a good time building you. I had a good time touching your every nook and cranny. And I can't wait to see what kind of adventures we have together. I don't know what they're going to be. It's going to be a whole new world. It's going to be exciting. Anyways, let me set up the final shot here. Final shot. All right. Final shot for the tiny cabin build. If I didn't know how to end it before, by the way, ending it is always the hardest part of any vlog, at least in my opinion. This is how I'm gonna end it. <laughs> Thanks for being with me. We'll see you on the next adventure. Also, construction work really does a number on your gloves. Put these, uh, put these bad boys through the ringer. Don't they kind of look? Don't they look kind of cool and worn in now? <sighs> All right. See you next time.